the bus stop of the Mediterranean. 14 different cultures came to Malta and rolled over these islands and in a peculiar way left the inhabitants doing what they'd always done. Behind me you see exactly why Malta became so prominent. Boats going to and from. You could cross the Mediterranean in any direction and Malta is the ideal stop with its deep harbours. Lots of invasions means lots of fortifications. In the classic Globuliginio limestone, that is a characteristic of Malta. It shines back bright as the sun. If fortifications could keep a virus at bay, Malta would be one of the safest places in Europe. Those are called the pregnant windows. Obviously how the, the shape that they were... Or... Would be fossils. See here? Who's there? With a pregnant window, you could put your head out to see if your visitor had malevolent intent. It's not just aviation that has to cope with these rapidly changing times. Hotels and restaurants have to look at everything we're doing. We had a look at what Malta is doing. Malta, remember, has had no new cases and a total of nine deaths since the beginning. They're regarded as safe by international standards, but they want to keep it that way. And this, they open international tourism their intent on not let the standards slip so that their own health and the safety of their own citizens comes under threat. Masks are not mandatory in Malta, but do expect frequent permit checks. Welcome to Bos and welcome to the Change Hotel. Food is famously good, especially the fish. When you're in the middle of the Mediterranean, you're going to have a pretty spectacular selection. This is Lily Butichek. He used to live in Belfast. He now has a restaurant just where the ferry from Malta to Gozo lands. It is very, very good mentally to be here in a restaurant with lots of people. We're not just in any restaurant. We're in under the grain. Malta had no Michelin star restaurants. Now they have three. And this is one of the three. The Maltese food movement, it's grown exponentially over the last 20 years. And there's no stopping it now. The beer is called Chisk. It comes from the word for Czech because nobody in Malta could pronounce Czechs when they were being paid. And of course the money got spent on beer and here we have Chisk beer. It's delicious. The old Asia window collapsed in 2017. The new one, worth the trip, is in Zhuangjini Bay. The last few months have seen things slowing down again. And you can see nature moving back to the tourist regions and the coastal spots where holiday makers ran the show from May to October. So what to do in Malta? It's coming down with history, more than 400 churches. Lots of swimming and boat trips to explore those little caves around the islands. The streetscapes of the capital, Valletta, and the little villages that pop up around every turn. Cycling along the narrow roads and the cliff-top paths. Blue sea, blue sky, sun-soaked rock. This is, what, this is what four hectares of vineyard in Malta look like. Joseph Bonello showed us around Tabeta wine estates. The Romans were producing wine and honey here 2,000 years ago. And until 2004, Maltese wine had not a great reputation. Everything changed when it joined the European Union and had to compete on its own terms against imported wines. Our favourite blend, 70% Syrah, 30% Cab Sauv. We came from the great European... Um, Clement de Piro's family have owned Casa Roca Piccola since 1580 and now it's open to the public. Amazing treasures in a domestic environment, like going into someone's living room. Architect Renzo Piano redesigned the entrance to Valletta in 2015. He recreated the width of the original gated city and used a stylized old architecture for the new parliament building as you enter and walk down the main street, meeting all the aspects, new and old, that makes Valletta such an attractive. You need a special vehicle to get into the narrower streets of the three cities, such as Vittoriosa, the converted golf buggy, the rolling geek, 
was the mode of transport we chose. So that's why I meant it's all very inner offices just there. That's the Maritime Museum here. If Malta gets too hectic for you, which is highly unlikely, you can come to Gozo. People say Gozo is what Malta used to be like. It's smaller, it's more intimate, and it's got that friendliness. The rest of Europe has lost as we've all rushed to progress and sped things up. Most people know that Malta is two islands. Malta the larger one and Gozo the smaller one. There are also a large number of smaller islands around to We can visit one of those, Camino. And on the way, we'll be calling into some of the smaller caves. This is called the Blue Lagoon. Beautiful Mediterranean water. And this being a warm climate, very salty, very saline, very buoyant. A few currents to keep your eye out for, but a huge area for pleasure. Particularly in high summer, you could have a hundred boats stacked up here. Thanks to the current circumstances, it's virtually empty. So this is a privilege indeed. Swimming the Blue Lagoon with very, very few people around me. I could stay here for hours. Sometimes you have to go looking for the little pieces of treasure. No tour bus will get up this road. It's just not wide enough. And at the end of the journey, you have the beginning of a journey. The cliffs that go on for miles, the beautiful blue sea, uncorrupted by pollution and uncorrupted by all the things that have come to a halt over the last two or three months. No more quintessentially Mediterranean can you get than the coastline of Gozo. Miles of salt pans that have been worked since Roman times. We toured it with Maris O'Flaherty in a pink tuk-tuk. To see the caves, you have to get up close and personal. St. Paul got shipwrecked here. I don't know if he was looking for heaven at the time, but he might just have found it here. And thanks to all the great people we met along the way, our guide, Clive Cortes, Diddy, Trepto, Kevin Vella, Morris O'Flaherty, Lely Boutigiek, Paul Falzon, Brice Kember and his team at the Phoenicia Hotel, Claudio and Emmanuel Caruana, Don Kutajar. As everything about the world of travel changes, some things stay the same. It's good to be back.